Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This one is gonna be a little shorter, not gonna be a whole hour. And I'm gonna continue on the topic of debugging because I feel it's a very important subject, especially now where I've been working on some pretty bigger projects at the company that I work in. And uh, I've seen some industry standard stuff that is very important when you're working on large scale projects. And uh, this one, well, we have started with debugging and how important it is. And now, as you can see, I have two little terminals over here and uh, they're printing hello. And no, they're not coming from any USART or UART peripheral. It's just my microcontroller plugged into the board and it's printing something inside this ID and not in a separate window as we did before. And what is this? Well, maybe you can see it's called GDB Sager J Link Debugging. And this one in particular is SWV. It's called Serial Wire Viewer. And what is this? Well, there's another trick in the JTAG slash SWD lines. If we have a look at this article that explains this very well, this is the JTAG connector. This is the full connector, but it also can be used with uh, the SWD, which is the single wire debug, which is used in these uh, cheaper microcontrollers. And that's actually a part of peripheral around the core, and it's called the trace. Uh, one thing of debugging is that debugging only, you know, this is the debug interface, this one just controls the CPU, uh, read from memory and all that, uh, runs breakpoints and run control like that. But what uh, Trace does, it watches the CPU instructions that are happening and you can actually use Trace to see what is going on inside the CPU while the CPU is running because with debug you have to pause the CPU but here you can run the CPU its normal application in its normal environment and use the trace peripherals to record each instruction and there are lots of companies that work on a special product that use the technology to uh, take the trace information and translate it to code so we can see what code has been executed and when because that's very important, especially for automotive uh, uh, usage. But we are going to use part of this trace to send back some data because there's a uh, serial wire output pin in the JTAG port. Here is the image and this is the one that can be used. So these are the trace pins over here. So this is every this is all the trace data. But there is another one. This is single wire output and this one will be used to send a bit of debug information uh, so this is kind of an official way of debugging without UART though the UART is very common method because it's very simple and most microcontrollers have it but you need to have an external uh, UART module but here you can only use well, here you can use just one piece and it's this debugger and this is in this case a jailing one and I as you can see using Sager as well, but I'm using the ST32F407 debug uh, board. Well, that's because Sager has software that can override the ST link firmware with its own Sager firmware, and it enables you multiple breakpoints. And it just happens that the company that we work, that I work, we use JLink, so I also use JLink on my STM boards. But you can use those software from JLink as well to revert back to the STM link, so it's not permanent. So this is uh, also applicable to STM link because STM link also supports trace. So you can do this similarly on the STM link side. And this tutorial with its code over here, I will link this website in the video description. But it uh, talks about all the code, what is going on, and it perfectly makes everything work simple. It's all in functions. Uh, and also in a clip shows the settings, which I will go with you right now. But I'm going to link this article because it does everything for you. But if you want to know a little bit about it, I can go into the reference manual of my board, of my specific processor. And if we go to the page 1697, here it's described the ETM. But we're interested in... Let's go up. Oh, it's lagging. We're interested in ITM. This is this page. Uh, is the instrumentation trace macro cell. 
and it's used to send that data that I was talking about. So if we go over here, here are all the registers and basically just a game of plugging the right numbers into the right registers. So here's a register that you have to write this number into to unlock all the others registers. So this is a bit of safety because these are uh, quite high uh, uh, numbers in the flash. So you have to have a special privilege to write in this section. And this is used by this first register. And then you have multiple addresses here for trace control, for different parameters. Uh, you have trace privilege for different ports. You have multiple ports you can write to. You have enable bits over here and the stimulus ports, which are going to be uh, the place where you write your data that is going to be written out. And it's 32 bit and for all the ports. And here's a, also an example how it's done. But because I was too busy working, I'm just using the software provided by the website I have just shown you right now. And it's working very well for me. Maybe in a later date, I will take a bigger dive into the uh, trace because it's quite a big subject. So without that, let's go to our code and see let's how I added it in. So if I go back to the coding uh, preview and I have my uh, window for the folder. So here I have my source folder and my include folder. This is all generated with the system workbench plugin. You can use the system workbench plugin. So this is the one that you can create new projects with. Uh, this is the, let me see, I have over here, this is a C project. Uh, maybe I have, yes, this is it. The AC6 stn 32 MCU. So this is the, um, the module that I use to create my standard peripheral library because I haven't migrated to HAL yet, but you can add also the ST link firmware inside from ST site and uh, HAL and everything else. But anyway, when you have your code, I have added the swd.c. So let's open this one as well. Let's put it in a separate. Oh, maybe let's put it over here. And also in the include, I have included the swo.h file, which is the one that has the definition. So let's put it right over here and the trace registers. So this is just a large file that the writer of this site has created and it's available on this link. And what this file does, it, it has all the trace uh, register uh, over here. So this is the one that we are, have seen inside here. So this is all these registers here, fanned and labeled. So we can use it more easily and all these addresses that are the important ones. So where you're going to write the data, when you have enable, trace enable ports over here and everything else is quite tidy and quite professional uh, library like. So I recommend you use the peripheral that he used. And in the SWD, there are all these functions for the printing strings and printing characters. So this is the function that is going to be the primary one. And this one is printing the character. So it's in the end, it's writing into the stimulus port that is going to output the data. You can see it's at the distance of E0000. And this is the exactly the one that we are starting to write the data. So it's 32 bit. And this is where the data is going to be written to be sent out the trace port. And it's a little bit of checking of if the trace control is enabled, uh, if the trace enable register has been, if there's a little bit of timing, uh, waiting till ready. So it's checking all the ports and settings if it's right. And in the end, I think this is a little bit for the M3 cores. I don't have an, any M3 device, so I haven't tried this, but apparently this is a little check you should do. Else if you don't have then just send a number, the C, this is the char that has been inputted into the correct register. So with using this function, you can do to for printing uh, the whole strings, which is just a character array. And uh, you can also create yourself a function for printing uh, numbers because it's doing the same. You have a function that we have used in the previous, if you remember, when we did UART, we had a function that uh, transformed a number into a string of numbers, so to say, and send it. So in the serial monitor, we see numbers. So it's gonna look something like that only uh, before you, you should just add zero to your number. So you transform your number into a character. So this is just that. And, um, 
And here is the code that I have. It's really small. It just includes the SWO.H, which is this one that includes the uh, all the functions that are being called. And uh, I'm just initiate. I have my delay here. I have definition for my all my LED pins. I initiate a millis counter system core clock, so I can count millis. So this is a millis type of delay. And I just initialize my pins for the GPIOD, which are the integrated LEDs. Don't forget the clock. And then I toggle a bit, so every one second it toggles on and off. So this is a bit simpler. Uh, and then I use the print string function to print a string at the default port 0, which is enabled by default. And uh, I'm going to show you how you can check if this port is enabled. And then just a little bit delay. And on my board, I can see my LED is blinking. And over here in this uh, monitor, you can see that it every second it prints hello. So it's working. So let's go into the Eclipse debug settings. So this is the settings for my uh, J-Link session. But if you have ST, it's going to be under AC6 ST and 32 debugging. Let's try uh, create a new one. And under debugger, um, I think that should be somewhere. Maybe it's not in this option, so you have to download a little bit other. But uh, you should have also the trace options. That, but that's why I'm using the JLink because JLink comes in a GACC package inside the Eclipse Marketplace already, and you just have one Windows application to rewrite it. So you can just reflash your ST debugger with the JLink debugger. And this is just it, it's debug. Uh, this is the link to the debugger. I have downloaded the JLink folder that is uh, for Linux and Windows and Mac available. And it's a folder, I'm gonna link it in the description. And it uh, includes all the, the debug uh, applications that I have written. And we're calling for the, uh, the command line exe that it's using for the debugging. You have to insert your correct number processor. I have the still the one that I use in my work. I should have 07 VG over here. It should be better. And this is all SWD, not JTAG. This should be settings like that. I've added uh, this portion. Uh, I set, yeah, this portion over here. Here I'm calling the uh, ARM GDB debugger. And it's startup. Here are a little bit of JTAG settings. The uh, SWO, so this is the single wire output pin that we care about. We just have to input the correct processor speed. Uh, I set the uh, SWO frequency to zero, so it will default to whatever it thinks the best. And the port mask is for the first channel, which is labeled zero, if you can see it on the display. One equals channel zero, two equals channel one, and so forth, it's binary counting. And other is all the same. I just have added here in the common that I put everything in a log file. In this case, I'm putting on my desktop for other testing purposes, but you can put this inside your workspace or inside your project. So this is handy if you're doing some kind of data logging, which I am doing at work using the SWO. And I'm logging data into a log file. And then when it's done, I just copy the uh, the everything that's inside inside the log file and copy it inside my other file and I use Excel or MATLAB to edit the data and present it as a graph. Uh, so these are some of the settings that uh, you should use uh, and this is all in the test debug portion. And don't say if everything was fine. So this is what this code is doing. It's sending data over the SWO pins and printing. So this is very useful. So this is like user debugging, but uh, integrated all in the debugger of your st 32 development board. So I think we're at 15 minutes almost. So I think this should be for this video. Uh, I think I inspire you to try a little bit uh, further to do this debugging because it really helps you while when your code gets larger and larger. And uh, in the next video, I'm going to do a little bit of uh, SPI. Uh, or maybe I will get taken over by some I square C. I'll see later what I'm going to do. But um, for now, I'm trying out all these debugging settings because it's very important to have your grounds, maybe creating your own libraries, which isn't even that hard. If you can see, this is how you create a library so you can learn. And I definitely encourage you to take a look at this website. It tells you all about the settings, about the additional software that can be used, maybe other software you're viewing, and uh, a little bit of external links, and of course, here are some um, 
the people talking about some settings so if you would like to uh, check this out if you have a problem maybe they have a solution as well so it's quite a lot so thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next video